morning to all, and uh, welcome to Salem Full Gospel Church, uh, whichever way you are communicating with us or listening to us or watching us, uh, our YouTube channels or our WhatsApp uh, broadcasts, uh, you are very, very welcome. Uh, my name is Bertie Kluter, and I will be sharing the word with you this morning. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, and we just want to praise your name and, and worship you, my Father. Lord, thank you for how you've carried us through this year, your protection in many ways, my God. Lord, this was a very difficult year for, for most of us, most of us in this congregation, in our communities, and, and Lord, we, we just want to bring every person before you that have suffered in one way or the other this year, my Lord, whether it was just by losing their jobs or their incomes, my Father, or losing a loved one uh, to death, my God. Lord, we pray that you will comfort those, Lord, that you will give those around them wisdom, my Lord, guidance, how to cope with all of this, my Father. And Lord, I want to pray that you will bless each and every one, my Lord, that you will bless our congregation, our community, my Father. Lord, I want to pray for the word this morning. Bless your word, my God. Lord, that what comes out of my mouth, my Lord, is your word, my God, and not something that I want to say, my God. Lord, I pray for receptive hearts this, this morning, my God. Lord, that you will give everyone a soft heart, my God. And that they will just lay back in your arms, my God, and, and allow you to work in their spirits this morning, my Father. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, we are sort of at the end of 2020 and, and going into 2021. And in a way, I just want to combine these two events in our lives this morning. Uh, we will also share some communion at the end of, of, of the word. So, if possible, if you can get ready for that too. Uh, I have three scriptures this morning, and, and I will go through them uh, uh, as, we, as we continue. But uh, let's, let's start off with, with the bad news, the situation at the moment that we're in. And... Uh, by now you would know that we as a, as a congregation don't meet in person anymore. We have, we have closed church because of, of the high infection rate and, and the situation around us with COVID-19. And uh, that in one way uh, tells you uh, in the situation that we are currently. And uh, the last six to eight months was... was different. It changed in many ways. And, and most of us have, have come used to the fact that uh, people are working from home. Uh, we do online shopping. We have to wear masks, clean our hands, sanitizers. It's nowadays just part of, of our, what we put in our, in our handbags, you know, uh, especially the women, you know, uh, when, when church was still open and I was at the door, we, you know, we sanitized people's hands and a lot of people say, don't worry, I've got my own. So that's that just become part of, of what we carry around with us uh, in this new normal, what people call it. You know, the one thing that I can't get used to up to now is doing virtual runs. For those who don't know, you know, you, you I, I try to run now and then, and please don't don't let this this tell you a different story. Uh, I love to run, uh, and so you now you you can't go out and do physical races because you can't have a lot of people together. So we do virtual runs. What's a virtual run? You enter a race anywhere in the world. I can enter a race in New York, but then you run it in the streets of Purasa. No, I can't get used to this. I'm old school. 
You get in your car, you drive somewhere, you go pay and you run, and that's, that's a race to me. Virtual racing is just, for me, you just run around the block in your own neighborhood, so I don't do a lot of those. So yeah, but let's get into the word this morning. I want us, our first reading will be in Ecclesiastes 9, verses 11 and 12. I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift and the battle to the strong. Nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant, or favor to the learned. But time and chance happen to them all. Moreover, no man knows when his hour will come. As fish are caught in a cruel net, or birds are taken in a snark, so men are trapped by evil times that, fail unexpect- that fall unexpectedly upon them. Now, this scripture <laughs> probably sums up 2020, you know, and uh, I'm sure many of you can think about a time when the best team or the best men didn't win a game or the strongest person didn't win the fight, where the, even the wise went hungry, and the intelligent were not rewarded with wealth, you know, where even a clever person didn't uh, 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 pass the test, they failed. And people will say it's unfair, 2020 was unfair. I mean, is it unfair when you lose your job and you didn't do anything. You didn't do anything wrong. Just one day, the president said, we'll close all businesses. Here you sit at home, you don't have an income. Is that unfair? You know, suddenly you can't travel. You can't go visit friends. You can't go visit your family. They can't come visit you. When your family are in need, You can't be there for them except for a phone call. Wouldn't you say that's unfair? You know? And then what does Solomon say in in verse 12? Moreover, no one knows when his hour will come. And then we had a lot of that this year. One minute, you're healthy. You can do whatever you want to within the rules. The next minute you end up in hospital and you don't come out again. We don't know when our hour will come. So many of us said goodbye to, to loved ones, to friends at this time. And then I think then we agree with Solomon when he says a lot in this book in the Bible, Ecclesiastes. When he says, life is meaningless. I mean, even in verse 8 of this chapter that we, read, that we read, life is meaningless. You know, how can we go on? Is there hope? Where's life leading us to? And I think it's better if I don't talk too much about 2020 anymore. And a lot of people have asked the question, will 2021 be better? Will things change? And if yes, when will it change? Now please, don't expect that answer from me. I'll have to disappoint you, big time. I don't know. I really don't know. And uh, I think a lot of people just want 2020 to, to be over, to end. As if at the th- on the 31st of December, somebody will just wave a magic wand and everything will be different. 1st of January, we wake up in the morning and there's no virus. Everything is back to normal. Wouldn't that be great? But unfortunately, I don't think that will happen. So let's get to our next scripture. Matthew 25. Jesus tells the parable of the ten bridesmaids. At this time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. 
to the foolish ones, took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Yes, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, or lamps are going out. No, they replied, There may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourself. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Once again, we hear that words, we don't know the day or the hour. Now, if you look at this parable, ten bridesmaids, Jesus described five of, them. five of them were wise and some of them were unwise, five of them. The five wise virgins brought extra oil, so they were prepared for what could happen. So now the question for us is, what do we do need to take with us for 2021? I can't tell you what is going to happen in 2021. But I have a suggestion of what we must pack in our luggage for 2021. And I got five things here that I think we must take with us for 2021 to be prepared for what lies ahead. The first thing I would pack is compassion and lots of it. Just this last couple of days, and when I say couple of days, I think it's three or four days, I've heard of so many people that have died, families that have lost four or five loved ones in a couple of days. We need to have compassion to those around us. We need to be able to help wherever we can in whichever way in this difficult time. To support people, family, friends, even strangers in this difficult time. So we will need to have a lot of compassion. And I know it's difficult to have compassion when you self, yourself is suffering as well. When you also sit at home, when you don't have a job, you don't have income, you don't have food. But we need to have compassion. Because if we don't have compassion to those around us, this world will be even a more darker place than it is currently. Item number two, patience. And again, lots and lots of patience. Because with what is going on in this world, what is going on in our families, in our communities, people are running out of patience because they don't see a way out. When you do go out, when you do need to go to a shop or a hospital, there's long queues. You gotta stand outside in the sun. You gotta wait for things. Government buildings where you need to go for forms, UIF, all these things that we need to do in order to survive, to get money. There's queues, you have to be patient. Some things take days, weeks. Uh, funerals needs to be arranged, all of those kind of things. But in general, people are in one home, is now together for more and more time than in the past. And we need patience with each other. You know, if we are short-tempered, we start shouting at each other, it will only make the problem worse. So we got to carry a lot of patience in our bags because things will not change overnight. Point number three, 
And I think this is, <laughs> this is maybe even more difficult. What I call servant, servanthood. You know, we need to learn to serve each other during these times. Because people are getting into situations where they can't serve themselves. They can't help themselves. They don't have the means. People don't have income. They don't have food. People don't have places to stay. People just run out of hope. You know. We need to serve our neighbors, our families, our friends, our colleagues, people in our congregation, strangers on the street. You know, just a smile when you walk past somebody. Or just, you know, just giving a little bit of cool drink or something, a sandwich to somebody. Could give people hope because they will feel that somebody still cares about them. And then something in point number four that all of us need is wisdom. Now I know that not many of us or not a lot of us is blessed with this gift because wisdom is a gift. But we need to pray that we can know when to apply wisdom in circumstances today and in future. You know, it's small things. What do I share with people? Who do I help? You know, what do I put on social media? Do I spread fear? Do I receive something and then I just, you know, send it on? You know, because it looks truth, the truth. You know, people need hope. People need love. And just by sharing stuff or, or saying stuff that we think is the truth, I think can do more harm than it can bring love and that it can help the situation that we're in. So we need wisdom in this time where there is such a lot of info around us, such a lot of info available so that we know when to help people, when not to help people, when people are trying just to pull a fast one and all of those things. And then the fifth item on my list, which I think is the most important of all of these things, because with this item, it somehow includes everything that I've mentioned. It's that all of the above option, which we all need to th th just to think of, you know. And that is Jesus. We need to pack Jesus and I mean that in a very, very special way. You know, Jesus is not something that is there in a box and then when we go out, we pick him up and we put him in our, in our, in our, in our baggage, in our luggage. No. Jesus is somebody that we need to choose. We need to make the choice that we want Jesus in our lives. Because without Jesus, we wouldn't even have been where we are today. Those of us that are still healthy, those of us that are still strong, those of us that are still here, is all because of Jesus. Those virgins, all ten of them, they were waiting on the bridegroom. They were waiting on Jesus. And we need to be ready. The only way you can be ready and the only way you can pack Jesus is if you are ready to choose him now. We need him now so that you don't have to worry that you will miss him. You don't have to worry that you will be asleep. You don't have to worry that you won't have enough oil. We need to choose Jesus now. And if you haven't made that decision yet, the time is now. Time is running out. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. And I know many of us listening today to this word will testify to the fact that there was somebody alive yesterday that is not alive this morning. And the question is, did they choose Jesus? 
are you sure that they are now safe in the arms of Jesus? And the question is, will you be safe in the arms of Jesus when he comes to call on you? It is a decision that we need to make, and we need to make that almost right now. I want to finish off with Philippians 2. In verse 12, it reads as follows. Therefore, my friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purposes. Now, in my Bible, <clears throat> there's a little explanation at the bottom for each word, verse. And it reads as follows here. For verse 12, therefore ties this verse to the previous section. Work may mean that the entire church was to work together to rid themselves of the vision and discord. The Philippian Christians needed to be especially careful to obey Christ now that Paul wasn't there to continually remind them about what, what was right. We too must be careful about what we believe and how we live, especially when we are on our own. In the absence of cherished Christian leaders, we must focus our attention and devotion even more on Christ so that we won't be sidetracked. And we are in a time when we are on our own a lot. Yes, we can reach our leaders on the phone, on TV, on broadcasts like this, but it's not the same as in person. And there is so many leaders out there now that we have access to. But we need to stay focused and have our attention and devotion on Christ so that we don't get sidetracked. Verse 13, it says, What do we do when we don't feel like obeying? God has not left us alone in our struggles to do His will. He wants to come alongside us and be, with, be within us to help. God gives us the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. The secret to a changed life is to submit to God's control and let Him work. Next time, ask God, what do you want to do His will? So again, I want to reiterate this. Please don't wait too long. For 2021, take Jesus with you. Make that decision. And make it right now. Whether it's going to be a difficult year or when it's going to be an easy year, take Jesus with you. And how do we take Jesus with you? By accepting him into our lives and into our hearts. Amen. As I said, we will, we will also partake with communion. And uh, I will read from Matthew 26, from verse 26. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his dis disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink for it, all of you. This is my blood and the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Just listen to those large words. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day 
when I drink it and kneel with you in my Father's kingdom. And how do we enter that kingdom? How do we come be part of the Father's kingdom? Once again, the answer, by accepting Jesus. He's the way into the kingdom. And He needs to be in your heart. He needs to be in my heart if we want to enter the Father's kingdom. Let's eat and drink together. Precious blood has left me forgiven Father, I thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that those that don't know you will accept you, my Father. Lord, that they will just come before you and say, Jesus, we need you. Jesus, we accept you. Lord, in this year that lies ahead of us, my God, that we won't go anywhere without you. Father, we thank you for what you've done for us in 2020. We thank you that you brought us through these difficult times. Lord, and I pray that in 2021, that you will lead us. You will give us the wisdom and the compassion, my Lord. You will give us the patience, my Lord, and help us to be servants, my God, for you, for your kingdom, my Father. Lord, I pray for every leader in our church, in our communities, in our province, in our country, my Lord. They will call upon you. Lord, give them wisdom. Guide them, my Lord, to lead us through this difficult time. Where people are questioning every decision. Where people don't know what to do, my God. Where people have lost, they lost hope, my Father. Lord, I pray for your love. I pray just for your Holy Spirit to be poured on us, my Father. Lord, so that we can go through this. And Lord, your word will stand forever. So I call on your word to go out to everybody, my Lord, that needs to hear it, my Lord. So that they can know of your love. They can know about your kingdom, my Lord, and they can know about your will. Lord, bless us, my Lord, and I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.